I'm Tiffany from Wax Photo Video and we're here in Istanbul to talk about travel photography and more specifically street photography when you travel. Now there's a few things we're going to cover later but a couple of things to bear in mind is that a lot of street photographers and travel photographers will tell you to hone in on a project brief. So today our project brief is going to be shooting workmen or workwomen. Um, generally what we're going to try and do is focus on people who are doing a craft, working at a market, it gives you something to pinpoint and something to practice on. Now, the other thing we want to talk about is non-traditionalist filmmaking. What we want to discuss with you is when you're shooting for travel, can you also shoot for Instagram and TikTok? Maybe you want a bit of a montage, maybe you want to show off your trip, or maybe it just adds something to a project to have a little bit of video. So we'll talk about that briefly, but today we're going to be focused on shooting stills. So let's go look at my kit bag and then we'll get started on the day. So before we get started today, I want to talk a little bit about kit. And usually when we talk about kit, we tell you all the amazing specs that every camera has. But we're not going to do that this time. Because when it comes to street photography and travel photography, you can use almost anything. And that's kind of the beauty of it. You have greats like Cartier Bresson, who used to shoot on a 50mm with a Leica, all analog. You have people like Martin Parr, who have famously stuck with his 5D4, which is not mirrorless. But today I've decided to choose the Fujifilm X-T3 and the reason for that is because currently you can get a really good deal on these used. It's a couple of hundred quid, it's really not going to break the bank if you're looking for a good deal and the specs on it are pretty decent. I've also got an 18 to 55 so remember with Fuji it is APS-C so the lens is actually 1.5 times what you get so an 18 to 55 is probably more towards a 24 to 70, roughly. Um, so that's my camera. I've also got a 50mm because I think the buckle will be better. So that's got a different aperture on it. It's a bit nicer if you're photographing something like a market. But yeah, so really good camera, really good price point. The only thing I would say is it doesn't have an articulating screen and that's a little bit frustrating for travel photography, but for the price you can't really complain. So what else is in my bag? So I've got a couple of microphones. The Fuji systems do shoot video and I honestly think it's really great to just bring stuff with you that you might need. It's better to have it than to not have it. Obviously, as I said, I've got my 50mm here. Really light, really little, really not too heavy at all. And then I've got a few little bits and bobs that just help make my life easier. So one of the things that I carry around is a Manfrotto small LED light and some filters to go with it. Sometimes in markets, and especially if you're photographing inside shops where the lighting isn't ideal, this is a great shot. The only thing with this is it's not discreet. So then you do kind of have to work with the people in the shops to make sure that the pictures are a bit better. I would say it is worth it if you can get someone to agree, but obviously a lot of the time there's a language barrier. So just bear that in mind, but it's always worth having some source of light with you. So I also bring the DJI Pocket. It's really great for people who maybe aren't that into filmmaking, just want to capture some shots. To be honest with you, I wouldn't use this for professional work or for taking pictures that I wanted to share. This is more for a bit of fun, so we might try it out later. Um, but yeah, really cool. Lots of them in our used department as well. So the point I'm making is that your kit doesn't need to be extravagant and you certainly don't need to be breaking the bank with it, especially for something like street photography and travel photography. And then finally, obviously, apart from SD cards and batteries, which I've got plenty of, I've also got a lens cloth. One of the hardest things when you're in busy areas or you're trying to get photographs of someone discreetly is having to do it again. So look after your kit. So the final thing I'm going to talk about is bags. Um, I would say, whilst a camera is obviously incredibly important, bags are so crucial when you're going traveling. So. Part of the thing you want to look for is a comfortable bag. You need it to feel like it's not too heavy. You don't want to hurt your back. It needs to be quite stable. On top of that, I really like this bag. So it's a Wandered Provoke. Um, it's the smallest bag that they do, which is the, I think it's the nine or the 11 liters. Um, it doesn't look like a camera bag. So for someone like me in Istanbul, I think that's a really great feature. Um, the tripod holder comes in really handy for water. Um, you won't be using a tripod today at all. But it's also really important to make sure that you can wear this all day. You don't want to be going back and forth to your apartment or trying to stop a lot because you need a break. So I really like the way this bag feels. Um, obviously, it's up to you what, what you're comfortable with, but I think it's really important to pick something that isn't going to ruin your back for the four or five days that you're away for. So 
Let's head over to the Grand Bazaar and see what we can photograph. So one of the things we're going to start with today is markets. The thing about markets is that people are so busy, it's so packed, that it's a lot easier to take pictures of people. You don't need to be as brave as you would normally. And the other thing is, is that markets are full of these really interesting moments. You have smoke, you have fire, you have cooking, you have flea markets, fabric. So it's a really wonderful place. A couple of tips before we get cracking. Uh, I would say make sure that you would take some lira with you or some cash with you. It's always good to sort of compensate somebody who you're taking a picture of, especially if you want a particular picture or pose. The second thing to bear in mind is that you probably care a little bit more than they care about picture taking. So try and de-stress, forget about it, and if somebody asks you to delete the picture, just delete it and move on. Uh, so let's get walking and we'll see what we can find. So another thing that I'm kind of looking for is some of the simple rules. If you're quite new to photography, there's a few little tips and tricks that you can do to try and get some really good composition and some good framing. So one of those rules is looking for things in series of threes. That's always great because it gives you a bit more of an idea of what to compose. Another thing you can look for is bright colors. So if you're in a place that's quite dull, quite dark, and somebody's in a bright yellow coat, that's always gonna make a really good shot. And then steam. Steam and smoke are your best friends in a market. They give you this really, really beautiful opportunity to capture something a bit unique and different. The main thing you want to do is at all times you want to be looking for things. You want to keep your eyes open, see what you can see, pay attention. Um, really the moments that you get the best photographs is when something happens that you sort of don't see coming and that's why we're shooting on Aperture Priority for this. This is where sometimes shots just don't work. So uh, I really like the composition. The lights are really nice, but because I don't have the articulating screen and that freedom, I can't quite get high enough and see what I'm doing. So I'm going to give it a go without it, but realistically, it's probably not going to happen. That is sort of the one downside. Um, well, it depends, depends how you like shooting, I guess. So at the moment it's a bit of a sit and wait game. Uh, there's some people that are purchasing and actually they're kind of blocking the nice shot. So um, we're just going to wait for them to move. I think street photography has two sort of systems. One is, is a sit and wait game and the other is much more speedy. Um, it sort of depends what style you like. Some people like both. Personally I'm not really a sit and waiter but I think this shot's going to be worth it. So I'm not really sure about this area. I haven't seen anything I really like at the moment. Um, a lot of it is, is not really trinkets, it's not food. It's sort of kitchen bits and bobs or home bits and bobs. So I think we're gonna move and see if we can find something else. Also, it's very low lit. Um, there's not a lot of drama going on in the shadows. So yeah, we'll see what we can find. This is quite a good opportunity to get quite a classic shot. So right in front of me, I've got a sign right in the center of the frame and I've got some repetition with these sort of red roofs that are jutting out. Um, it's gonna look beautiful. The light's hitting it really well and there's a load of people in the middle too. Sometimes it's really important to know when your gear isn't quite right for the scenario. So for me, I'm going to need to get a lot closer. Normally I would carry a 200 or something equivalent, but realistically in a space like this, changing lenses is not an option. So that was a little bit too hectic and it's really difficult to get pictures because everyone's sort of mulling around and pushing into each other. So we've come to the Spice Market indoors to see if we've got some more luck. Now we're still looking for some centre compositions, we're still looking for rules of three, but we're also looking for something just visually a bit more exciting. So let's see what we can find. So this is already so much better and um, visually it's really interesting. There's a lot of people here that just look more interesting. The only thing to mention is that obviously we've come inside from outside. So my settings have completely changed, obviously. I've now gone up to um, eight on aperture, so I'm shooting for the environment. Um, we'll see what happens. I think realistically it's a bit too yellow in here, but we can always fix that in post as well. Okay. 
we're going to try a sit and wait shot. So we've got this really beautiful spice shot, really colourful, but the guy's also wearing something really colourful too. So what I want is him in the middle and the shop on either side. Uh, for these kinds of shots, it is a bit more of a sit and wait game because you're just waiting for the opportune moment to take a picture, but this seems like it's going to play out really well. So let's see what we can do. So if you're a little less confident, one thing you can do is take pictures of the produce instead. It's absolutely beautiful here, as you'll see um, in a moment, and it's a really great way to sort of practice your framing, your composition, checking your aperture, your ISO, your shutter speed, and not having to focus on people in particular. Um, sometimes people can be quite intimidating, so I'm going to take a few shots of the produce and we'll see what we get as well. So one thing that is great for photography, especially if you're trying to get something quite atmospheric, is smoke and steam. Now we tried a little bit of this earlier, but realistically it was a bit too busy. There is a guy uh, selling some street corn and some street food just over here, so we're going to try that shot again. My recommendation would be to take a lot of shots. If you have burst mode, put it on. It's always challenging with smoke to get that really beautiful shot where it sort of winds around their face, but they're still in focus. Um, but yeah, let's give it a go and see what we can do. One recommendation I would have is just to set your shutter speed at a little bit slower than usual, just to try and capture that movement. But then do stay really steady or use a tripod if that would help you more. So this is a really nice shot because there's a lot of shadow um, and a lot of light coming through. So it gives you that sort of smoggy effect. There's a hell of a lot of people, which is perfect because it sort of means you're not, you're not focusing on anyone in particular. But there's also an opportunity right in front of me that people are passing by. And if you get the right, most interesting person pass by, it can really make the shot, it can elevate the shot a lot more. So what I'm gonna do is stand exactly where I am and then hope that somebody comes in that has something a bit more interesting, like a hat or something else. So that was a great moment. There's something quite culturally interesting in Istanbul where they come out of their shops and they sort of have a cigarette, um, which they don't have to do. They can do that inside, but they chat with each other. And at the moment, we've got this really sort of harsh sunlight, which is creating these beautiful shadows across people's faces. So I just got this stunning picture of a man smoking. It's a great thing because you can get it almost anywhere. So I would say it's a good way to practice. They always engage with you too. They sort of look directly at you and give you a little bit of a smile. So it makes for a really beautiful shot. Center frame it, cropping quite tight, and you've got a winner. So the interesting thing about a lot of European cities like Istanbul is that a lot of them are built with hills, much bigger hills than you find in England. What's really nice about it when the sun's out is that you have these big sweeping views of the city that look absolutely stunning. And then going down, you can see the volume of people in a place like this. So that's a really easy wind shot. You'll always make it look good as long as you can expose well. In terms of exposure, I personally always expose for the sky. It's the most likely to be blown out. And if you're still having trouble, one nice thing about this camera is you can switch to a different mode. Um, and that just gives you a bit more of a yellow feel, which I'll show you on the screen. Um, and I often find that helps bring the sky down. The other option, which is a bit of a strange option, but you can shoot more flat. So if you shoot flatter, it should keep the sky from being blown out. And then in post-production, you can bring that back in, change the curves. You can even sort of implant a different sky if you want to, depending on your skill level. Uh, but yeah, always exposed for the sky. So we're coming into the Grand Bazaar now. So again, we're looking for that rule of three, which we haven't seen yet. We're also looking for a bit more low light atmosphere. And then hopefully we're gonna see some lamps as well, some Turkish lamps. So we should also be able to get some really nice bokka. So I might switch to my 50, but let's see what we get. about repetition and we found a really great example. So just behind me there's a load of columns. The really interesting thing about it is you've got a lot of columns in a row so that's a really nice way to compose a photograph to make something look a bit more photogenic, a bit more atmospheric. But on this occasion there's two columns going all the way down and a flag in the middle. So it also gives you a way to frame a subject. So we're going to sit and wait and see if we can get someone really interesting coming through toward us. So what 
what you can see is that you've got the three pillars going in a line in the background, slightly off center. And it just makes for a much more interesting composition of this, this guy. So whereas usually you'd see the guy and then your interest would be over, now your eye sort of comes backwards. So it just again elevates that picture to make something a bit more interesting. So something that gives your pictures a bit of depth is if you can find something to shoot behind. So find something really interesting, which is what's behind this pillar, and then use the pillar to just edge into the frame to give you a little bit more depth when you're shooting. great time in Istanbul. It's been really wonderful to shoot in the sunshine again, which we've not seen uh, here for a really long time. But I wanted to give you guys a few summaries and tips to take home with you, just to kind of help you with your travel photography. My first tip would be shooting in high contrast, like bright sunshine. The thing that it helps you with is you don't have to lean so much into your knowledge of settings. Uh, the sunshine will often silhouette people, the glare will often give you this artistic feeling, so it just kind of helps you a little bit in terms of making something look quite beautiful. So I'm gonna go and explore the rest of Istanbul. I'm really excited to go and take some pictures as Golden Hour rolls in. But if you take any pictures at home or you've learned anything from this, please share them on any of our social platforms using the hashtag WexHowTo. We'd love to see what you've been up to, but otherwise subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more content like this or more of our reviews, and we'll see you on the next video.